<laughs> so I'm Lily with San Antonio Water System, and I have uh, Brad and Nathan with me. We are out here, they're in our conservation department, and we are at our Dos Rios Recycling Water Plant. And today we're bringing you a very special periscope where we'll be talking about ways to, well, it's integrated pest management, or simply put, a way to use nature to control nature. So these two guys are experts. We've got a bird expert, uh, an, I always get it wrong. I'm just gonna call him a, a, a bug guy. <laughs> okay. But, but um, uh, Nathan actually consulted on this project when he did not work for Sauce priorly. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is old hat for them, and it's really interesting, so we hope you enjoy it. Before I get out of the frame, let me remind you to please uh, swipe and share, invite others who might be interested in purple martins and birds and bugs and just integrated pest management. And uh, by all means, give us some hearts if you like the topic so we know what other topics to bring you. So thank you, guys. I'll thank step you. out of the way. Thanks, Lily. All right. Well, um, here at Dos Rios, uh, we sort of have a crown jewel of a really good insect management program that kind of incorporates a lot of different facets. And as Lily mentioned, we're talking about integrated pest management. We're going to call it IPM uh, from here on out. And uh, IPM is a management method that's been around for decades. And it involves several different components uh, to incorporate into a management program. You know, most people, when they think of they're dealing with a bug, they're either going to spray it or step on it or whatever they're going to do. And so an integrated, an integrated program, an IPM program, involves four basic components. You have a physical or a mechanical component, which is like trapping, using traps, using uh, removing the, the, the pest with your hands. Uh, you have a cultural component, which means how are you handling the environment? Are you mowing your grass norm regularly? Are you keeping weeds down? Uh, are you reducing moisture? A cultural, how your environment is. Then there is a biological component where you're using uh, natural organisms to control a pest. And then there's a chemical component to it where you're using some sort of a chemical in that. And uh, with an integrated pest management program, monitoring the pest problem is extremely important. You want to understand what pest you're treating. You want to understand uh, how to approach that problem and understand the biology of the pest so that you don't just have to resort to a spray. You can do these other methods first. Chemical control in an IPM program is sort of a last resort. So uh, we're going to talk about two components uh, in this particular program here at the Sauce Dos Rios uh, water treatment plant that have become very successful over the years. Uh, this program started in 1996 at one of the other uh, water treatment plants and then started here at Dos Rios in 1998. And uh, Tad Eaton is the person here at Dos Rios who handles this program. And when I worked for the extension office in 1998, I actually met him and we started to talk about the problem because here at, the, at this treatment plant, they actually put dry, um, biosolid sludge into drying beds uh, to, to dry, then they scoop it up, haul it off to be composted. And during this time, when this biosolid is still moist and wet, flies love to get in there. Flies are decomposers. They break down this, this organic material. And so all of the neighbors to the treatment plant we're complaining about massive fly populations. And so uh, Tad and I started talking about this and we started talking about some things that could be done. And over the years, it has evolved into this magnificent program that it is today. And so uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about a biological component that is used out here and a little bit of a chemical component as well. And so one of the, one of the stars of this IPM program out here at Dos Rios is Purple Martins. And you can see behind us, we have a couple of birdhouses and there's actually six, 50. there's 50 birdhouses and 600 uh, purple martin motel rooms out here uh, for martin families to nest in. And so, um, Brad, why don't you tell us a little bit about purple martins from the standpoint of how, of kind of how they fit in out here, what makes them go? When, when do they come and go? Well, the Purple Martins arrive back in San Antonio starting in February. And they'll spend the summer here and they'll look for nests. They'll use these nesting boxes to raise their young in. And by the end of the summer, they'll take off and head back south to Brazil and the tropics. 
um, but they, they, raise their, they raise their young here. And purple martins for a long time have been dependent upon people to nest. Uh, this, I think we think this started with the uh, Native Americans who used to hang mm -hmm. gourds at their campsites. Yep. Um, and purple martins used to use those gourds to, to nest in. And after a while they realized this worked for them. This kept, this kept predators away and it was successful. And purple martins no longer nest in the wild east of the Rockies. They're exclusively uh, dependent upon people for nest sites. <laughs> we had a question about how many boxes are out here. Uh, there's 50 or 60 boxes out here, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. each box contains, this one contains uh, 16 nesting chambers. Mm -hmm. um, so the purple martins will, will arrive in February. They'll, they'll select nesting chambers. The females come later. And by now they've, they're nesting. Yep. So, and you'll see they're, uh, they're defending their, their boxes. Mm -hmm. And they are uh, purple martins fly high with their mouths wide open, eating bugs. So, mm -hmm. And they love the drying beds because there's a lot of flies, there, uh, yes. wasps, and insects here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also barn swallows here nesting under the eaves of the buildings. But these mm -hmm. two swallow species spend the summer here. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, another question. So purple martins are a great solution out here, but birds in general might be a good solution to uh, insects in your yards or in your general neighborhood? Oh, much better yeah. than, spraying, than spraying insecticides around the house. Yeah. So if you don't, you'll have, a, you'll have birds that come to eat those insects. And a lot of them are really pretty tropical birds, like yeah. tanagers yes. that eat wasps around the house. Uh, mm -hmm. So I always leave the wasps hanging by the garage because I know tanagers will eventually be along to eat them. <laughs> so. You're brave. But a lot, of, a lot of birds don't eat seeds and they won't come to your bird feeder. They're eating insects. That's right. And that's why those birds are migratory and they only come back to San Antonio for the summer when there are insects. Mm -hmm. Now, Brad, is it true that most of the seed eating birds uh, start their lives eating insects when they're in the nest? Oh yeah, even hummingbirds will eat insects. Yeah, so, so. Um, it's, it's important to, to understand all that, that information that's in there. Now, we are here at the Dos Rios Treatment Plant, uh, the Saw, San Antonio Water System Plant. This is our largest facility uh, to treat um, effluent and turn it into recycled water, turn it into biosolids, and then turn it into clean water that goes down into the San Antonio River. Um, we're here talking about the Integrated Pest Management Program, IPM program, that we do here to control flies in the biosolids drying pits. And so we've talked a little bit about purple martins and having all their houses out here for insect control. Now, um, Has, that yes. That made it possible. Their pesticides are no longer sprayed here, right? Well, almost. Uh-huh. Uh almost. Why? Because <laughs> what are you the pesticides are a small component of the IPM program, Brad. Uh-huh. And they include the biological component, which are the birds and What's really, really interesting is that we actually have some insect warfare going on here at Dos Rios. Um, uh, in the insect world, there are parasites and predators. You know, you have bugs that eat other bugs, but you also have insects that use other insects for their life cycle as a host. And most of those insects are wasps and they're ant-sized wasps or smaller. And one of, we have uh, three different species of wasps that are actually released here at the Dos Rios treatment plant to go and attack fly larvae in the sludge and fly pupae in the sludge. And uh, thank you, Lily. And uh, this is actually a package. I'm going to hold this up. This is a package of parasitized fly pupae in um, some shavings that is actually um, put out into these drying beds and these little tiny wasps emerge from these fly pupae to go out and attack the other pupae. Bugs in a bag. Bugs in a bag. And here at Dos Rios, they release approximately 60 million wasps a week. Wow. 60 million of these little guys. And they actually bury uh, these plastic tubes into the ground with an open lid like that. And they pour this material in and cover it with the lid so that it keeps the birds from getting in and eating these fly pupae and it allows the wasps to emerge unfettered and get attacked by other insects. And so they actually pour these in. The, this particular package just came from the distributor so none of the wasps are really emerging yet uh, but they will be within the next couple of days 
And we're talking about tiny now. We're talking about sugar ant tiny size wasps here. You wouldn't notice them unless you were looking for them. So, so we, had, we had a couple questions. Yes. Um, they were asking if you would agree that most people get alarmed by the word chemical, but that there are organic chemical. I, I probably missed the question in entirely, but I okay. guess they shouldn't be alarmed by the word chemical. The word chemical, and, and I'll tell you now as an entomologist, um, the word organic to me just means from a natural source. There are organic chemical uh, pesticides that are just as powerful as the ones you can buy from the other um, synthetic uh, distributors out there. So it's just what source does it come from? Uh, and there are good, there are good uh, chemical options on, on the natural side and the synthetic side. And so um, from that particular standpoint, uh, one of the other things that we release here, uh, it, there is a material called natrol. Uh, natrol is, uh, contains a um, bacterial crystal from a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis, or Bt. And Bt is a, a caterpillar, beetle larva, and fly larva specific bacteria that is excellent in natural uh, pest control strategies because you can apply it and it doesn't affect anything else. So I think that, well, we got two more questions. Mm -hmm. One was, were the wasps, are the wasps harmful? And the other was, um, can, uh, what was it, IBM? I keep messing up my, my questions because yes. they fade as we go. But I think it was what you were just answering about being able to use a chemical in IBM. Absolutely. Um, the wasps are very harmful to the larvae, to yeah. the fly larvae. Yes. They're so <laughs> tiny yes. that you can't even see them with your eyes. <laughs> yeah, there's um, than ants. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this little tiny black dot right here is a wasp uh, that has emerged out of one of these pupae. These wasps are harmless to humans and animals. They are bred and produced to be used against other insects. And they don't hurt the birds. They don't hurt birds. Uh, these are insect specific parasites. No, the birds eat them. Birds, yeah, the birds eat that's them. Why, that's why they, uh, you that's can why buy putting these. them in here. Yes. So the blackbirds won't eat the uh, That's right. You can buy wasps. these from online distributors to release in your own garden. Or if you have horses, you can release it for fly parasites on horses. So these are extremely beneficial. They are harmless, harmless, harmless to people, animals, plants, only insects. Um, the the natural material that we were talking about, the BT crystals, are actually mixed in with the biosolid sludge in the plant, and then they go out and mix in to the drying beds, uh, and then when the little fly larvae are feeding on the compost, they eat those crystals, and it affects their digestive system, and they die. BT is also harmless to people and animals. It is specific to these insects. Uh, the last thing that we do, and there is a small chemical component, to this treatment program out here, but it's not like what you would think. Normally, when an insect population gets completely out of hand, that's when you have to get a chemical to knock their population down and be able to manage them better with natural means. In this particular case, they are mixing uh, with the bio sludge, they're mixing an insect growth regulator compound that actually keeps the larvae from developing to the adult stage. And so, um, that is, it's a chemical component, but it's not exactly like what you would think of as a spray and kill. It is a spray, eat, and then not mature to the adult stage kind of a program. So, um, and this particular insect growth regulator is only, only affects insects. So this program out here is specific and it is dynamite for controlling insects. Great. I have to tell you, it's a summer day, it's hot here. Yeah. We're standing outside at a uh, biosolids facility treating sewage yep. and uh, there are no flies. There are no flies. So, the only not things, even mosquitoes. No, the only things <laughs> flying around us right now are the mud daubers going to the sludge pits and getting mud to make their nests on the building. So uh, it is a testament to the success of this program and, and the neighbors around us will tell you the same thing, no flies. So a couple of things, I'm going to ask you to reintroduce yourself in just a minute, but right after that I want you to talk a little bit about if someone wants to try this at home with insects that kill other insects or birds that help control the population, what are the kinds of things they should be looking for, okay. thinking about, and where do they get more information? Okay, well, I'm Nathan Riggs with the Saws Conservation Department, mild-mannered entomologist in, in my off time. <laughs> I'm and, Brad uh, Weir with Saws Conservation, a mild-mannered uh, bird watcher. There we go. So, um, <laughs> And we are, we are here talking about the IPM program to control flies at the Saws Dos Rios water treatment plant. Now there was a question about encouraging birds in your, in your landscape, <coughs> 
excuse me. Um, that was not a fly, by the way. And, um, and um, encouraging, and how would someone be able to use insects in their own landscape? Well, you can probably start by going to a local nursery and buying a bag of ladybugs. Uh, you can get those at local nurseries, you can get them online to release in your garden to help eat aphids and those other pests in your landscape. Uh, you can then step up from there and buy lacewing eggs, you can buy par parasitic wasps uh, from online dealers, uh, mostly from online, and there's, there's tons of, of online distributors for, for beneficial insects. So uh, just look around, understand though what pest you want to control so that you can get the right an insect to control it because not these little wasps won't control caterpillars they will control flies so you have to understand your pest right. and uh, be able to control will it control caterpillars yeah. especially right now on migration when yes. warblers and tropical birds are coming through yes they're eating the caterpillars out of the tree and you can hear them you can hear their jaws snapping <laughs> so so if you have a lot of room the uh, purple mm -hmm. martins work yeah they, they need a lot of room to fly in and out of the nest Mm -hmm. um, no but trees, even right. even at a home, if you, you, you don't can, want them real close to trees. You don't want them close to trees. You don't want them real close to trees, and they don't want to be either because mm -hmm. uh, uh, hawks will hunt them. Mm -hmm. um, they need some room on the approach. But by planting trees and native plants, you can encourage other birds mm -hmm. to, That's to right. nest around your house. And before you spray in insecticides, remember there's something there's mm -hmm. something waiting oh, yeah. out there. There's always so. something out there, even if. The only time you should really consider spraying an insecticide is if your pest population is completely out of control and it is damaging your plants or if, if it's and like... And your income. And your income, <laughs> something like, yes. Uh, otherwise, there are natural approaches uh, allowing those pest in, predator insects to come in, uh, maybe changing how you handle watering less. If you water a lot, you're going to have a lot more bugs uh, than you, you want to handle. So using water wisely in the conservation way and uh, being able to understand mostly what kind of insects you have and be able to control them in a very specific way. So, well, um, we have had a good time out here at Dos Rios today. It's you think, Brad? Day. Yes. So, <laughs> I'm staying. Um, yeah, Brad's staying. He's going to watch the birds. But we are so glad that y'all were with us today. Maybe you learned a little bit about IPM and what a successful program can do on a large scale. And um, we'll see you next time on the Saws Periscope. Thanks, Nathan. I love your Thanks, work. Thanks, Brad. Here. And actually, Tad is right here. And Tad is here too. Yes. <laughs> Tad's waving. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.